series. I think it prepared us for this series. You know, I think the physicality, um, the ball pressure um, really helped us going forward into this series. So, you know, we got to continue to keep getting better. You know, we talked about that just throughout the course of the playoffs, getting better and finally hitting a good rhythm. Uh, ESPN, Ty, you guys took your lumps over the course of 82 games. You know, there was criticism on you and your roster. Meanwhile, the Raptors were praised for 82 games, and then it comes out of these four games, and you know, people are going to look at Coach Casey and the job he did. What do you have to say about just the, the nature of this job and, and what you saw from the Raptors this series? Um, as far as Casey goes, I mean, you know, I, I think he did a tremendous job. I think to, you know, take a team, you know, change the culture, you know, change the environment, um, change the way they played, um, develop some young guys, made them a lot better, um, and then win 59 games this year, second best record in the NBA, and top three in offense and defense. Like, um, that's unheard of. It just, you know, I think the hardest part is, you know, and you've seen it for years with Michael Jordan, you know, they happen to run into LeBron James. And um, they haven't lost to any other team in the last three years but, but us. And I think, you know, um, you know, we have a good team. And I think, you know, having LeBron, you know, to get through, you know, it's tough. You know, and um, but Casey did a hell of a job. I mean, can't sit here and say he didn't, you know. And um, I love Dwayne, you know, talked to him a lot, you know. Um, but he could have did a better job with that team. You know, and um, so that's, that's about it. Kenny Rhoda, WHBC. The defense in the regular season tie was good enough in the Indiana series, pretty good in this series, outstanding. How did that evolve, and is this what you need to do defensively to get back to the, the finals again? Um, I think, you know, in the regular season it's tough. You know, I think you're playing different teams, different styles of basketball. I think in the playoffs, you know, we've always been better defensively because we get a chance to lock into one team and um, know what we want to take away. And I think um, last series we did a pretty decent job on Victor Oladipo. I think this series we really did a good job on DeRozan, you know, keeping him off balance. And you're going to give up some threes, you're going to give up some point paint, I mean, some paint points, but – Overall, to take away what you want to take away, we wanted to take away DeRozan, and we wanted to take away their bench. And I thought we did that in this series. Um, you know, DeLon Wright, you know, is a big factor in their bench. Van Fleet, um, Pirtle, Siakam, we did a really good job of just taking those guys out of the series and, um, you know, doing a good job of taking DeRozan out of the series. And um, like I said, you're going to give some threes, you're going to give some point paints, I mean, some, <laughs> some paint points to Big Valanciunas, who played well tonight. But you got to give up something. So we just... You know, we know DeRosa can beat us, and um, we wanted to take him out of the series. Joe Varden, Cleveland.com. Ty, in your starting lineup, who is the two guard? I don't know. Can we say it's JR? Say it's Kyle. Okay. Uh, my point or my question was um, all year, you guys most nights had trouble with the guard matchups, and then in this series, uh, I mean, I can't, haven't looked at the numbers yet, but it was really good. Um, how how did that turn? How, how did you take what had been a weakness for you all year, uh, and, and basically you know make it a push in this series? Um, I think, like I said earlier, just you know playing a seven game series, um, locking in defensively on one team, and um, being able to strategize and um, understand what you want to take away. And I think our coaching staff, you know, Longa Barty, you know, LD. Jimbo, D. Jones, Phil, Posey, Vitale, um, Big Dan on down. You know, we, we sit in and we discuss how we want to take, you know, certain situations away from teams and make them play to something else, something they're not comfortable, comfortable doing. And, um, you know, the coaching staff did a great job just, you know, just coming up with a game plan to, to take DeRozan out, you know, out of the series and take their bench out of the series. I think we did that by, you know, playing LeBron with the second unit, you know, to take their bench out of the series. So we did a good job with that. Production-wise, you, you just got stuff from your guards that you hadn't. Was it, oh, you mean scoring-wise? I, I mean everything, but let's talk about scoring now. It, was it because you were playing Jr. And, and Kyle together? How much did George Hill have to do with this? Just I the think, three of them and how well I mean, they played. I think, um, you know, G. Hill's a big part of what we're doing and what we do. And when he got hurt in the Indiana series, missing three and a half games, you know, it really, you know, it really hurt us. And um, with him being back and – 
playing with pace, attacking the pick and rolls, getting downhill, getting to the basket, um, causing the veer backs with Kevin. So they got to switch now. Now we can post Kevin on smaller guys. You know, that's a big part of what we want to do. And when he's on the floor, then, you know, LeBron, he doesn't have to overhandle. I think when he went out, you know, you don't want Kyle and JR bringing it up. You know, so, you know, LeBron had to bring it up and do a lot more. So with G Hill out there and he's, you know, Feeling 100 percent, it really helps us out offensively. So that allows Jr. and Kyle to get to their spots and be able to knock down open shots. Jeff Shadell, News Herald. Ty, if uh, it looks like you're playing your very best basketball right now, and what, what, if so, what was the key? What is the key for for that to be so? Um, I think defensively. I think defensively we're playing pretty good and. Um, when we're getting stops, when we get out in transition, able to play with pace, um, I think we're really good. I think um, this series um, we made shots. You know, guys made threes. A lot of different guys stepped up. You know, having four or five guys in double figures every single night is big for us. So, I mean, we still got to continue to keep getting better, but I like where we're at right now. And just one more. Um, when they took that brief lead at 38-36, you called that timeout. What, what did you say in that timeout because things – Really got going after that. Um, just take care of the basketball. You know, I thought we had a great series of just not turning the basketball over. And then getting back, get our defense set. I think we blew a couple of coverages um, where they, they scored on. So just getting our defensive balance, um, understand what we're doing schematically, um, defensively. And then we got that back. So I think our defense really turned up and then end up scoring on the goal of a 10-0 run, I think, to end the half. So that was huge for us in like a minute and 50 seconds. Jason Lloyd, The Athletic, you may have answered this in piecemeal and a bunch of other answers, but I'm just – so many guys struggled during the Indiana series, and, and you relied on LeBron to do almost everything, and, and so many guys contributed in this from Kevin to JR to Kyle. So many guys got hot. I guess, we're, one, were you surprised or concerned at all with how much guys struggled against Indiana and just collectively what allowed everyone to turn it around in this series? I mean, I would have to say George Hill. I mean, he was out. You know, our starting point guard, you know, he was out, and – um, they really turned the pressure up on us defensively. So, you know, like I said, you don't want Kyle and Jr. bringing it up under the, under the rest. Um, they kind of had Jose, you know, flustered a little bit with the pressure. And then you don't want Kevin bringing it up with that. He's young guard him. So we was in a dilemma, you know, I think, um, offensively. So they put a lot of pressure on our guards. But with G. Hill missing three and a half, you know, games, it was tough on us. You know, I think we couldn't really get into an offensive flow because, you know, we didn't really have a point guard who could relieve some of the pressure. Chris Fedor, Cleveland.com. Ty, going back to DeRozan, this is now three years in a row that you've been able to, as you said, take him out of the series in a way. It's DeRozan. I mean, he's one of the better scorers in the NBA. So how have you been able to do that? Why have you guys been able to do that in a way that other teams can't? Um, we scheme for it. And then it's, it's different because a lot of teams don't, prepare and practice on different things throughout the course of the season, you know, to get ready for the playoffs. You know, we do that all the time, and a lot of guys get frustrated that, you know, we do certain things in practice working on it. We don't use it during the regular season, so they get frustrated, like, why are we doing it? But, you know, they've caught on the last couple of years, but it's very important. You know, I just think when you go to the playoffs, you can't do the same things you, you've done all year because teams prepare for that. So, you know, you try to catch guys off guard. Um, you know DeRozan can score in bunches. You know he's, you know, can score the basketball. He's an all-star. So we wanted to just find ways to take the ball out of his hands and just make him uncomfortable. So, and we did a really good job of keeping him off the free throw line for the series as well. Usually things on defense, it's, it's so much about developing habits throughout the course of the regular season. So what gives you the confidence that even though it's not everything that you're doing in the regular season and you're working on it behind the scenes, that when it's the postseason and you need it, you can go to it? Um, because we drill it, you know, we drill it and we work on it um, from day one. You know, we've been working on different kind of blitzes and things to do defensively that you know we can do in you know in the playoffs. And you know, the guys they lock into it because they understand if this is for the playoffs. And we've done some of the stuff during the regular season, but I think if you just continue to work on it throughout the course of the season, when it's time to use it, you know, I think guys are more comfortable. So it's not like something we just throw out, you know. The, the, the night of the series or something like that. So it's things we work on, but, you know, the guys do a good job of following the game plan. And um, as you can see, defensively in this series was really good. 
Ty, PJ Ziegler, Fox 8, you give some credit to the Indiana Pacers in getting you prepared for this series with the uh, Toronto Raptors. What do you feel the Toronto Raptors series now has done in terms of getting you ready for the Eastern Conference Finals? I think the same thing, just their physicality. I think, um, you know, Valanciunas, he's a low, you know, on the block, on the post-ups. They have great guard play in DeRozan and Kyle Lowry, and they have shooting. You know, with CJ and Van Fleet comes in the game, he can shoot the basketball, run, pick, and roll. So, um, get us ready for good guard play, um, good bigs. So, um, it's pretty much the same thing, preparing us for the next series. Uh, Ken Miller calling post. Coach, uh, two questions. First, can you speak about not only just the defensive, uh, the intensity of the defense inside and how Kevin has been playing, particularly since he came back off injury? I don't understand. Your defense in, your defense in the paint. Uh, was crucial in this series, and can you speak of Kevin's impact since he's returned from injury? Well, I mean, when you get a guy like Kevin who can play the four and the five, but you know us playing at the five, um, it's hard for big guys to keep up with him. So he really does a good job of spreading the floor, and we kind of run a reverse offense. We set picks with our smalls and space our bigs, and um, Kevin takes advantage of that. I thought in this series. Um, you know, against Valanciunas, he really uses speed and quickness, you know, catch and go, attacking quick, coming off pin downs, curling and going. So um, I thought he played at a faster pace, you know. Um, and when he's playing like that, we're tough to beat, you know. So um, rebounding the basketball, you know, be able to make shots, be able to post mismatches, um, that's where we miss him the most. Can you speak Can you speak real quickly to your depth? You, you appear to be playing a lot of different players. Are you looking – to play more players, usually you shorten it at this time of the year. You know it's eight, seven, or eight guys that you go with. This year appears you be you're expanding that uh, lineup. Are you comfortable with your depth? Yeah, very comfortable. Um, we got like 12 guys that should probably be playing. You know, um, Big Z's done a fantastic job this year. Jetty's done a great job. You know, Rodney Hood, so Larry Nance. So we have a lot of guys that deserve to play. And I just think, you know, going into a series, you have what you who you want to play. And then as the series goes along, you just kind of, you know, see who's playing best or if someone can give you something different, you just kind of adjust from there. Ty, Hayden Grove, Cleveland.com. Um, it looks like you guys are going to have at least five or six days rest. Are you, uh, you know, the, with the way you're playing right now, it seems like you're on a roll. Are you more excited about the rest or is it, you know, something that you maybe you want to keep playing because you're playing well? I'm excited about the rest. I think uh, LeBron needs it. <laughs> um, I think um, – you know, we'll be prepared. You know, we'll make sure we got a, a couple of days off to start. And then we'll go to the drawing board and see who we're playing. But, you know, the guys know we got two days off. Um, come back Thursday, get locked in, and um, kind of go from there. Up ahead, Hill to Smith from the corner. J.R. Smith tans it. He started last game, his first NBA start. Shot clock winding down. Smith, perky jerky move on the fadeaway. Cavaliers are 4 0 since Hill returned to the back injury. Another! George Hill rocks the rim. Toronto opens up 4 of 7 from the field. Smith makes his move on DeRozan. Fade away on the baseline. J.R. Smith was under the weather the other night. Did not score, but did play. Been a good fit with the Raptors. Signing a three-year, $25 million deal. Love. Abaka goes down, and Love puts it in. You to be our quarterback. Rosen told me today at shoot around it was disappointing, but he's not looking back. And today's all that matters. Before you get started, I'd like to congratulate the Cleveland Cavaliers on a, a heck of a series um, by them. I thought they showed their championship pedigree. Uh, a great example for us, the difference between a regular season and a, and a playoff run. And um, they're, they're playing at a, a high level right now. So my hat's off to them. I thought Tyloo did a great job of preparing his team, having them ready, um, uh, you know, 
and just really clicking on on a lot of different levels and just you know took us out of what we wanted to do in, in a lot of different areas and uh, did a great job. <clears throat> Uh, Coach Ken Miller with the call and post. As bleak as this moment is right now, is there any bright spot that you can take out of this? Now, well, the, the two games that we had the opportunity to win, those were ones we shot ourselves in the foot. Um, you know, even though they were playing great basketball, Cleveland was, we had an opportunity to put ourselves in a position to win. Um, and then after each one of them, we were emotionally drunk, I thought, um, and just took the wind out of our sail. That, that was probably the positive, the fact that you, we put ourselves in a position to win. But there's no more victories in the NBA. Um, you know, close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. And, um, you know, we got close, but it doesn't count for anything. And they came back tonight and, and played the way a championship team needed to play. And, and we, didn't, we didn't after the first quarter. <clears throat> Did you feel that there was – that you had – any inkling of any hope of winning this game tonight? Well, I, I thought our guys, you know, would come in and compete um, harder. And, uh, you know, and I told them, you know, they're going to come out and throw, try to throw a haymaker and how we respond was going to be important. And, um, you know, well, for whatever reason, we didn't. And that, that, was, that was disappointing. But like I told our team, that we can't let this series, def you know, we, had, we did some good things this year. Uh, our, we had a heck of a season as far as the regular season is concerned, but there's another level we have to learn to get to and make that commitment to get to uh, as an organization and as a team. You know, and uh, there's a different level, and you just saw it tonight. <clears throat> Kenny Rhoda, WHBC in the back here. Coach, mm -hmm. three years in a row this is the team that's, that's knocked you out. Is it as simple as they have LeBron James? That's a big part of it. I mean, they, you know, they're, they're, it's a big part of it. You know, you're looking at one, probably one of the guys that's going to go down as one of the greatest ever. And, um, you know, it's, it's a matchup nightmare for anybody. And I think uh, anybody who's played against him will see that. But at some point, that, that's going to come down. Uh, that's going to change. You know, we've seen it all. We've seen it with Michael. We've seen it with Kobe. We've seen it a lot of great players. And uh, we want to be the one, the, the organiza Toronto organization wants to be the one who knocks that gate down. For whatever reason, we got the unlucky draw every year of going against them. But, um, you know, it, it's going to come a time when that gauntlet is going to come down. And uh, why not us? You coached <clears throat> against them uh, and beat them when you were an assistant. Now you're here. What different person? He's the, there's no, at that time, he has a lot that he probably hadn't experienced. He was trying to figure out the situation in Miami. Uh, that was when the zone was cute, uh, you know, just to give a hesitation. And there's some things at that time we tried to do to take some things away from him. And uh, he was still young. That was how many years ago. So uh, that's hard to even compare him now. Now he's, he's seen everything. He's, he's a computer out there. And, um, you know, it's, again, it's just a totally different situation, different person, different part of his career. Dwayne, Steve Simmons, Toronto Sun. If you go back about 10 days before the series started, would there have been any inclination in your mind that you could have ever been swept? No, I didn't. In my heart, I didn't think so. I thought I had all the confidence in the world that we'd come in and fight, compete, and we did, Steve. I thought we did for two games um, and, and really put ourselves in a position when if we one of those tip-in goes in at, at home in the first game, it's a different story. But uh, like I said, close doesn't count. And so it, it just tells us how small margin of error you have as a, as a team uh, to go against a, a team, you know, because everybody had counted Cleveland out. You know, they struggled a little bit, had the big trade and all that. They thought everybody thought they were vulnerable. But as long as uh, they have him, they have a chance. And uh, that's, that's what we're looking at. And, but 10 days ago, had all the confidence in the world. So does this feel <clears throat> worse than last year? Because of the circumstances? It, it, it hurts. It hurts just because of the season we had, Steve, a franchise record, uh, top five in offense, top five in defense, and, you know, just like almost like we flipped the switch. So that's what's disappointing as much as, as anything else from our coaching staff. Uh, everything we tried to do just didn't click. Uh, that's the disappointing part uh, that, you know, the difference between last year and this year. 
Eric Smith mm -hmm. Sportsnet. You've touched on it a little bit uh, a couple times here. The way that this game went tonight, though, the way that you, you lost, is that more frustrating than anything getting blown out to this extent? Well, it is disappointing, you know, because, again, you want to go out fighting, scratching, clawing with your best effort, uh, with, your, with your best approach, and not give in when they throw in the haymakers. And believe me, they, that team is going to beat a lot of teams. Uh, uh, again, but you don't want to go down that way and, and let go of the rope. And uh, that's what's disappointing as much as anything else. And because we, we've done too many good things for the seat throughout the season in the playoffs against Washington in the first game and, you know, game three uh, to let go of the rope. <clears throat> Dwayne, PJ Ziegler, Fox mm -hmm. 8. What was the biggest difference in your mind? in the Cavaliers team that you saw in the regular season and then the one that you faced here in this four Well, the series. one we beat by 25 is a totally different team. You know, after the trade, I think uh, LeBron is rejuvenated. Uh, the young man, you know, 38 minutes and 29, whatever it was, you know, he's just like a different person now than he was at that time, early in the season. Um, you know, he's playing at a, an elite level, one that I haven't seen as a, as a coach before and I've been doing it a long time. And um, so that's, that in itself is the difference, I think. And, and at the same time, he's brought everybody up around him to make a more different guard. Kevin Love's a different player right now. You know, I thought uh, Kyle Corver is playing at an elite level now. So um, Jeff Green, is, you know, is playing at a different level. I mean, George Hill uh, is playing at a different level. So uh, he's raised everybody's level up and made it more difficult. But again, at the same time, for us, it's, it's disappointing that we didn't, you know, compete the way we did um, for four quarters, uh, the way we did in game three. <clears throat> Is there a point in the series where you felt like it, uh, the tide really shifted towards the Cavaliers? Was there a defining moment? Well, I thought, again, like I said, I thought we were emotionally drunk uh, in game two and also tonight after the two tough losses. We didn't bounce back as strong as we, you know, should have. Uh, that was that was the, the I thought that was a turning point after game one and also tonight after game two was you could just see it that you know just the guys wanted to they wanted to crank it up but again just was draining I thought Kyle was drained after his great game in game three and uh, just didn't have it tonight. Coach Eli Munio, AP Radio. A lot of praise was sent toward your second unit during the season and rightfully so. Uh, but when starters kind of start struggling like they did in this series, do you feel maybe these guys on the bench try to pick up the slack and maybe feel a little bit extra pressure to kind of get the team back into it? It's a different, it's a different game than in the playoffs. It's a totally different approach. Uh, also, too, when uh, LeBron is playing as many minutes as he's playing, they played a lot of their starters against them, which is a great experience for our young guys to go through that, to see that, to feel that, uh, to go against a guy like James who's playing at a high level. Um, and it's a difference. And, uh, you know, we was trying to shuffle the lineup, trying to match to, you know, and ended up breaking up the second unit a little bit. But um, it was a great experience for those young guys. I thought Ananobi uh, was, was, had an excellent series. I know he didn't feel like it, but to get that experience to go against a guy like James and guard him in the tough situation and battle him, uh, I guarantee he learned a lot and will grow a lot from, from this series. <clears throat> Coach Neil mm -hmm. Davidson from the mm -hmm. Canadian Press. Uh, two questions. One, what was your view of the flagrant foul on uh, DeMar? I didn't. I thought he was going for the ball. I don't think he was trying to hurt. Uh, I think it was, who, it was George, George Hill. I don't think he was trying to hurt him. Clarkson, I'm sorry. You know, I don't think he was trying to hurt him. I thought he was going for the ball, and he swung, but he wasn't going for his head, you know, and uh, it was unfortunate, but, uh, and, you know, I don't, there's no malice, I don't think, on DeMar's part. And, and DeMar seemed uh, so uh, – wanted so much to have a bounce-back game uh, today. What lessons do you think he takes away well, from this? Well, I don't know if there's a lesson, Neil. I think uh, the, the situation with him, uh, he just wanted to bounce back. And I thought he was really trying, trying to get going, get his, his motor cranked up, uh, you know, and – to, you know, to make up for the other night. And, um, you know, he, he tried. And I don't – but, again, I don't think that that, that play was, had any malice in it whatsoever. Dwayne, uh, Michael Grange from Sportsnet. Mm -hmm. uh, in the, late in the second quarter when Serge got hurt or hurt himself, you went to Lucas. 
Uh, what were you looking for? And, and what well, was your one, we were having trouble with the blitz for whatever reason. When it went to the big, uh, all year long we had made plays and and made a, did a good job. And Lucas is one of our better passers. And uh, for whatever reason, you know, the coaches said, "Hey, we got to get Lucas in. He can break the press. He can break the break the blitz." And um, he didn't. I mean, he just he struggled. And so that was a you know a, a lesson for us. But he had done it all year long. Uh, he had been an excellent passer out of there, and uh, Serge and Jonas had, had struggled a little bit making plays out, and they did it. And that was another good job of of them. I thought tonight their blitzes were much better. It was I think it was the difference in the game. Any second thoughts given like he hadn't played in t over two weeks? And well, I mean, the right other option was Jakob, and Jakob had struggled with that too. So we was trying to go with our best passer, and Lucas is by far our best big man passer in that situation. Thank you. Coach, uh, I'm with man Yahoo Canada Sports. What do you think uh, Kyle and DeMar learned from this series? Oh, I, well, again, the, the, the different, you know, they know. Uh, he, Kyle and DeMar, of all the guys in the locker room, understand the level of play that you got to play against a, a championship caliber team like Cleveland. Um, so I don't, you know, again, you'd have to ask him what they learn. Um, it's just how difficult is, the difference is between a regular season and playoff in a championship type team to go against them. Uh, but you'd have to ask him what they learn. I don't know what they learn. Um, you know, I thought Kyle played his heart out in game three. Uh, and um, so, you know, again, the, how tough it is and just remind them how tough it is more because they've been they've been here, what, three three years in a row. So they, they understand, they know the level of play that you have to play with. Thank you. Valanciunas, a two-handed flush. DeRozan gets it in for Valanciunas, gets it back. DeRozan, oh! All the way to Mar DeRozan flying high to the rim. Seven on the 24. Valanciunas puts his head down, drives in, Thompson holds his ground, and Valanciunas floats it home. He's in double figure scoring. James to the baseline, Corver waits and puts it in. Lowry bit on the fake. Yeah, Kyle for the second time. And the rebound to LeBron. Six points, five boards, five assists. Looking for another assist, he's got it to Kevin Love. Camping out in the inside. It's a 7-0 burst for Cleveland. Ibaka getting the start tonight, eight points for Serge Ibaka. Hill. Gentlemen in the back over here, third year in a row that you face them and, and they've knocked you out. What is it about this matchup that gives you guys so much trouble? Um, <clears throat> hard to say one thing. You know, I don't, like I said, like you said, you know, last three years have been rough for us. You know, competing against this team. Um, maybe they just got our number. Um, things just don't go right for us. Whatever it is, it could be a lot of things, you know. All I know is, you know, last three years, they have been a reason why we have an event. So, you know, whatever that is, I, I, I couldn't sit up here and tell you one specific thing. Might it be just that, I mean, LeBron's had different teammates over the last three years, but he's the one common denominator. Is it as simple as it's running into LeBron? Um, I mean, you, you say that, but it's still a team thing, you know. Um, it's not just him going out there scoring 128 points. You know, the the guys around him that, you know, he get involved in the game, um, make plays for them. A lot of things he do for his teammates, get them going. You know, um, it's definitely been a challenge for us over the years. Sportsnet, uh, Kyle, you and many others understandably going into this game talked about the, the fight. Was the loss frustrating or the way you lost getting – blown out as, as badly as he did? Uh, the loss, I mean, both. It's all frustrating. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. you know, it's kind of a one and both. The kind of same thing right now. Did you expect more of a fight, though, obviously? I mean, you guys were not anticipating losing like I mean, this. It was a loss, so it was frustrating either way.
How do you guys evaluate having to had, go up against LeBron uh, for three straight years? Like, how do you guys kind of put that in context? The guy's going to go down to the best one or two players, three players of all time. And, you know, he certainly showed it in this series. So do you kind of, are you hard on yourselves because you couldn't get it done? Or do you, do you kind of almost feel like it's your bad luck that you keep running into him? Um, <clears throat> definitely hard on ourselves. You know, we couldn't get it done. You know, we had opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. Um, and, you know, we couldn't pull off, you know, that big challenge you want to you wanna face up against going against a guy like that. You know, um, all you can ask for at the end of the day is, you know, have the opportunity to face him to try to, you know, make up for the previous time, you know, and, you know, we just couldn't couldn't get it done this time around. Bruce Arthur from the Toronto Star. Tomorrow, you are always hard on yourself. This was a very tough series for you and a tough night for you. Uh, what happened in this series uh, in terms of how they affected you and maybe how you feel about how you played? <clears throat> um, you know, I always take account accountability on my end, how I play individually um, as a leader, you know, um, every step of the way. You know, um, with me understanding that they was going to try to take me out the game, you know, try to – Beat them with the pass, you know. Um, just try to make the right plays to try to get us going, get a rhythm going, you know. Not just for myself, for my teammates as well. And you know, we for myself couldn't find a rhythm, and you know, we couldn't get it clicking like we normally do did during the um, regular season. Now, you try to improve yourself every year. Is there anything in this series that you look at and say, "That's what I need to get better at"? Um, for sure. You know, I'm at some point I'm gonna sit down, reevaluate myself from top to bottom, and you know, figure out, understand, study, and, and, and come back a lot better. Tom Reed from The Athletic. Uh, this is for either guy. You saw what the Cavs kind of went through through the course of the season at point guard. What did George, the addition of George Hill at the end of the season and through the playoffs, what have you seen as far as his ability to maybe stabilize that position a little bit for them? He's a experienced point guard, you know. Um, he was brought here to handle the ball, um, do his job, and you know that's what he did. Fulfilled that 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 one spot. Uh, Neil Davidson from the Canadian Press. This was a lopsided result, but there were other games that were close. Will they stay with you in terms of thinking about what might have happened if that tipping had gone in, if that bucket had happened? I mean, it's life, man. You know, if you if you dwell on what should have happened, what could have happened in life, you know, you'll drive yourself crazy, you know. The fact of the matter is, we out, we done. Got to get back to reality come tomorrow and work, work our butt off this summer and get ready for the next stage. I was in here, and he was saying, like every every year they come in, and, and their first fo their focus is to stop you. Did you see anything different from what they did this time around, as opposed to previous years? Um, nah. You know, like I said, you know, I, I knew they was gonna come out, blitz me, try to get the ball out of my hands, and you know, it was on me to be able to write, make the right plays. Um, you know, um, they did a, a great job um, in a secondary defense. You know, when I when I got off the ball, you know, forced us to make passes um, we didn't want to make. You know, got in pass lane, got steals, kind of knocked our rhythm off offensively. And, you know, that was one thing that we were struggling with um, for the first time all year. Uh, for either guy, Eli Mooney, maybe radio. Coach Casey was saying that, like, with every great, somebody has to throne the great. And LeBron would be the great in this situation. After falling short the last couple of years, do you still feel that you guys are that team that will eventually dethrone LeBron in the East? Yeah, I mean, we we had three opportunities. You know, nothing's never promised. You, we're not sure if we'll get this opportunity again. So it sucks to dwell and sit here and have to go into the summer not knowing um, if the opportunity presents itself again. And, you know, you don't want to look at three opportunities as, as a dud. And, you know, like I said, it's something we got to, you know, understand that if it don't kill you, it make you stronger. You know, we got to carry that over team-wise, individual-wise, and, 
you know, like I said, get ready for the next go round. LeBron James, 11 point cushion for Cleveland. O'Gara intercepted by Corver. Up ahead, Hill to Smith from the corner. J.R. Smith tans it. He started last game, his first NBA start. Shot clock winding down. Smith, turkey jerky move on the fadeaway. Cavaliers are 4 0 since Hill returned from the back injury. The rim. Toronto opens up four of seven from the field. Smith makes his move on DeRozan. Fade away on the baseline. J.R. Smith was under the weather the other night, did not score, but did play. Been a good fit with the Raptors. Signing a three-year, $25 million deal. Love. Abaka goes down and Love puts it in. You to be our quarterback. DeRozan told me today at shoot around it was disappointing, but he's not looking back. And today is all that matters. And DeRozan is on the board, Allen, but so is LeBron James, who answers with a bucket on the interior. Lowry upstairs, Valanciunas, the catch, rejected by Love. James thought there might be a foul call, instead it's Smith. A three, J.R. Smith has got the hot hand. J.R. may be a little surprised by the pass, but ended up collecting himself in three points. Valanciunas, a two-handed flush. DeRozan gets it in for Valanciunas, gets it back. DeRozan all the way to Mar DeRozan, flying high to the rim. Seven on the 24. Valanciunas puts his head down, drives in. Thompson holds his ground, and Valanciunas swings it home. He's in double figure scoring. James to the baseline. Corver waits and puts it in. Lowry bit on the fake. Yeah, Kyle, for the second time. And the rebound to LeBron. Six points, five boards, five assists. Looking for another assist, he's got it to Kevin Love. Camping out in the inside. It's a 7-0 burst for Cleveland. Baca getting the start tonight, eight points for Serge Ibaka. Hill, the handles, and the scoop. George Hill with another highlight. This can bring the lead to double figures. James behind the back. Love for two. LeBron James. 11-point cushion for Cleveland. O'Gara intercepted by Corver. Up ahead, Hill to Smith from the corner. J.R. Smith tans it. Started last game, his first NBA start. Shot clock winding down. Smith, turkey jerky move on the fadeaway. Cavaliers are 4 0 since Hill returned from the back injury. Another! George Hill rocks the rim. Toronto opens up 4 of 7 from the field. Smith makes his move on DeRozan. Fade away on the baseline. J.R. Smith was under the weather the other night, did not score, but did play. Been a good fit with the Raptors. Signing a three year, $25 million deal. Love. Abaka goes down and Love puts it in. You to be our quarterback. DeRozan told me today at shoot around it was disappointing, but he's not looking back, and today is all that matters. And DeRozan is on the board, Allen, but so is LeBron James, who answers with a bucket on the interior. Lowry upstairs, Valanciunas, the catch, rejected by Love. James thought there might be a foul call, instead it's Smith. A three, J.R. Smith has got the hot hand. J.R. may be a little surprised by the pass, but ended up collecting himself in three points. Valanciunas, a two-handed flush. DeRozan gets it in for Valanciunas, gets it back. DeRozan all the way to Mar DeRozan, flying high to the rim. Seven on the 24. Valanciunas puts his head down, drives in. Thompson holds his ground, and Valanciunas floats it home. He's in double figure scoring. James to the baseline, Corver waits and puts it in. Lowry bit on the fake. Yeah, Kyle, for the second time. And the rebound to LeBron. Six points, five boards, five assists. Looking for another assist, he's got it to Kevin Love. Camping out in the inside. It's a 7-0 burst for Cleveland. Ibaka getting the start tonight, eight points for Serge Ibaka. Hill, the handles, and the scoop. George Hill with another highlight. This can bring the lead to double figures. James behind the back. Love for two. LeBron 
James. 11-point cushion for Cleveland. O'Gara intercepted by Corver. Up ahead, Hill to Smith from the corner. J.R. Smith cans it. He started last game, his first NBA start. Shot clock winding down. Smith, herky-jerky move on the fadeaway. Cavaliers are 4-0 since Hill returned from the back injury. Another! George Hill rocks the rim. Toronto opens up 4 of 7 from the field. Smith makes his move on DeRozan. Fade away on the baseline. J.R. Smith was under the weather the other night. Did not score, but did play. Been a good fit with the Raptors. Signing a three-year, $25 million deal. Love. Abaka goes down, and Love puts it in. You to be our quarterback. DeRozan told me today at shoot around it was disappointing, but he's not looking back, and today is all that matters. And DeRozan is on the board, Allie, but so is LeBron James, who answers with a bucket on the interior. Lowry upstairs, Valanciunas the catch, rejected by Love. James thought there might be a foul call, instead it's Smith. A three, J.R. Smith has got the hot hand. Well, J.R. may be a little surprised by the pass, but ended up collecting himself in three points. Valanciunas, a two-handed flush. DeRozan gets it in for Valanciunas, gets it back. DeRozan all the way to Mar DeRozan, flying high to the rim. Seven on the 24. Valanciunas puts his head down, drives in. Thompson holds his ground, and Valanciunas swoops it home. He's in double figure scoring. James to the baseline. Corver waits and puts it in. Lowry bit on the fake. Yeah, Kyle for this. Joe Varden, Cleveland.com. Question is for both of you guys. Um, how do you think uh, a healthy George Hill changed this, this series? Uh, I mean, he's a, uh, another added ball handler, another guy with, with high basketball IQ, and that's been in big games. And, uh, you know, it helps to have that out on the floor, um, you know, to be able to create not only for himself as he did early on in the game, but just being able to create for others as well. So um, it's been great for us, you know, having him back, um, you know, after he had the, you know, the injury. Yeah, I think like I mentioned after game three, just uh, you know, having another facilitator outside of LeBron, uh, bring the ball down the court. Um, and for me personally, just setting a one five pick and roll, that was something just that I, that I missed, uh, especially in the first series when he was out with his back. Uh, just having him back healthy has been uh, very positive for me. Um, I know there's a lot of times where, where Bron and I are in the pick and roll and they're able to switch and we're able to get the ball inside, but a lot of time with the 1-5 pick and roll in this series, uh, Casey had them switching, and whether they double teamed or whether they, they stayed put, I was able to go to work. And um, it was the same thing with Kyle, too. I mentioned after the last game, he was able to get a – uh, a lot of the balls inside, we were able to re work our weak side action, and uh, you know, Braun was finding us, George was finding us, and you know, it worked well. It's good to have him. David Benjamin, ESPN. Kevin, the uh, point total you had these last three games is the most you've had since late December over a three game stretch. And during that stretch, the Cavs went one and two, not three and oh. Uh, considering how the first round went for you, where did this come from? And, um, can you just describe what you found in your game as of late? I think it just came from me being me. Uh, I said after game two, I didn't forget how to play basketball. I mean, I just was ultra aggressive. Uh, uh, you know, I found myself in spots, and I found myself, uh, you know, just missing little chippies, um, missing shots that were uncharacteristic for me to miss, but uh, continued to be aggressive. Uh, continue to put in the work every single day. So for me, it was just, uh, like I said, more than anything, just being myself. And for LeBron, um, how does this Raptors team compared, compare to some of the teams that you've faced in multiple years and eliminated in multiple years in the past? And, I mean, it's not your call in terms of what they do in the future, but um, just what's your opinion of them as a, an opponent? Um, I thought they were very um, 
well balanced, put together team this year. I think they showed all year um, what they could become, what they could become, and what they're capable of. Um, they built a bench, um, you know, and you know those the two headed monster. Kind of obviously it starts with, with Kyle and, and Demar, but they've been they built a, a very good team to, to succeed in the postseason. And um, you know everybody they kind of put on the floor throughout the whole season, kind of you know was very productive for them. Um, they didn't have to wear wear anybody down because they played ten or eleven guys, and I, and I you know felt you know coming into this series is going to be a, a tough challenge for us um, because of how well balanced they were and how well they played, you know especially throughout the regular season. Um, so you know we just try to you know, have a great game plan going on every night, try to execute it as close to forty eight minutes, and uh, see where it takes us. Uh, Steve Ashburn on NBA.com. For both of you guys, two very different series, but but. These 11 playoff games, uh, what have they meant to where your team is at now compared to the end of the regular season? Um, well, I think uh, every test for us is another opportunity for us to get better and see who we are. Um, you know, besides, you know, our starting five, well, besides, you know, us four, you know, that's been on the championship team here, and then you had in Kyle, um, you know, pretty much it's kind of, um, you know, a whole new group. Um, so, um, you know, every game, you know, from the seven game series in the Indiana series to the four games here, we're just trying to, you know, get some more and more familiar with each other, you know, as a, as a unit. You know, I know Kev, Kev know me, you know, with, you know, and Tristan and, and JR and, and Kyle. Um, but everybody else, we, we want to continue to learn and see where we can, you know, be as productive as they can be to help us be successful as a team. So, you know, it's still a learning, um, a learning experience for us. And the good thing about it, we have another round to continue to learn each other and try to get better. Yeah, I think just to piggyback off that, um, I mean, Bron said it's been a learning experience for a number of players on this team that, um, you know, haven't shared, had a, a lot of shared playoff experience or even shared time on the floor together. So I think game seven was... Uh, well, the entire Indiana series is big for us, but Game Seven, uh, in the fashion that we won, um, just getting that experience, and you know, heading into to Game One here, uh, as I mentioned in the locker room, just uh, you know, fighting back from a big deficit, um, you know, forcing it into overtime, and then finally taking that first lead in overtime, and never really looking back, and uh, you know, winning in the fashion that we did in the three games that followed, I think was was very telling and, and a learning experience for our entire team. From Beacon Journal uh, for both. Um, I know you have a much greater goal in mind, but is this getting to the conference finals any more satisfying just because of how tough the first round was and how tough the season was? Well, I mean, I can only think about uh, you know now. Um, we've had four or five seasons wrapped in one. We've talked about it all year. We know what the narrative has been about our team, but I can only speak in the moment. And to be able to put ourselves in a position where we can. Um, you know, represent the Eastern Conference in the finals. Um, that's all you can ask for. You know, um, you know. So we're excited um, about being a part of the Eastern Conference Finals once again, and, and have an opportunity to uh, compete for a championship. Um, that is what our goal is. Um, so you know, we we are excited about that. We're we're humbled about it, and um, we want to continue to uh, to get better throughout this week. You know, we have a <clears throat> we have a long week um, uh, where we can continue to get better. Uh, we look forward to that. And we look forward to the challenge, whoever we may face, either through Boston or, or, or through Philly. Um, you know, both teams definitely create a lot of, uh, um, you know, matchup problems. So, um, but at this moment, you know, we don't have to think about them just yet. Um, we will enjoy this moment and, like I said, um, be excited about what we've been able to accomplish so far in the postseason. LeBron, uh, Steve Simmons, Toronto's son. Before the series began, you talked about not having enough time from the seven-game series to beginning this one and maybe not enough preparation time. Would you ever have anticipated, knowing that, that you would have won four straight? Uh, well, we, well, we didn't. And um, I, wasn't, I wasn't telling a tale about we didn't. We came in and winged game one, and, and, and we had a, a game plan. Our coaching staff gave us the best, the best game plan that we can have in a short amount of time um, because of you know, having a game seven here, and then we had to fly the very next day and then play at one o'clock, um, I believe, in Toronto. So we kind of had to just, you know, wing it. And um, and we came out, and, and they kind of punched us in the mouth, and we kind of took that we took that hit. And, you know, when we took that hit, we, 
you know, try to go right back at them, punch them in the mouth as well. And um, we was able, like Kev said just a minute ago, that we was able to kind of force that game into OT and and then uh, take the lead for the first time, you know, after, you know, Kyle Culver's three, um, you know, at the first possession that we had. So um, in every game, um, we was able to, pre- you know, prep more and more and more and more and really get down to trying to execute and, and, and kind of neutralize what they like to do and how we can be successful. And um, throughout the four games, uh, we was able to do that. Chris Fedor, Cleveland.com. LeBron, for you, Dwayne Casey said after game one and game three and the way that those games went, he felt his guys were emotionally drunk. Um, can you sense that? when you have the effect on an opponent? And is that essentially what you were alluding to the other day when you said two points are not worth two points? Um, well, for, for our ball club, we want to try to um, try to make teams do what they're not very good at. and um, But more importantly, just try to make it tough. Um, and I think, um, you know, defensively in these 11 games, we've been very, very, very good. And offensively, we're, we're starting to pick up. We're starting to... We're starting to get a rhythm. We're starting to know what we're capable of offensively and where we can become. So, um, yeah, I was I was serious about the two points. It's not just two points because it's, it's, it's not. I know coaches are not going to like the – it is when you're, when you're 8 and, and 9 and 10 and, you know, 11, 12, maybe not 13 because kids are dunking now at 13. But at that age, yes, two points is two points. But when you get to our stage, it, it – some two points change the momentum of a game. You know, if you look at if you look at game three, um, at the end of the second quarter, I was able to find Jeff Green for a slip dunk at the end of that quarter. That's a momentum play. Um, that's just not two points. Those are momentum plays that kind of help you, uh, you know, you know, maybe take off. So um, we just want to try to be as good as we can. Tom Withers, AP. Brana, you guys obviously pulled it together, but 10 days ago, how worried were you that this was going to have a bad finish? What was, what was 10 days ago? You know, before game I'm five. Not that, I'm not that good. I mean, <laughs> I know I remember everything, but God, I mean, damn. <laughs> 10 days ago, I don't even Okay. At, you know, <laughs> before, let's say after game three. I don't remember Indiana. 10 minutes ago at this point. <laughs> after game three of the Indiana series, you guys okay. were down. You know, okay. How worried were you that it wasn't going to go your way. Um, no, nah, listen, at the end of the day, um, I understand that a series isn't won until you win four. So my, my, me personally, my confidence never wavers. It's just, um, it's just who I am. Um, I believe in, uh, you know, what I bring to the table, what I can provide to our team, and I believe in my teammates. So um, as everyone was burying my teammates alive, um, you know, throughout that first round series, I just continue to tell them, like, listen, uh, we can't win without each and every one doing their job and being as great as they can be. And I continue to uh, to preach that. So, um, you know, I, it's, it's impossible for me to, to, to lose confidence in our ball club, no matter what the stakes are, or what, where we're down, because if I do, then where, where, where are we going to go from a team aspect? So, um, you know, Indiana definitely tested us. Us being down 2-1, they tested us, but uh, we was able to, to win game four on their floor, bring it back home, win game five. Uh, got smacked around in game six a little bit and then, you know, get back to our home crowd and was able to finish it off. So, you know, it was a good test for us. Eric Corrine, The Athletic. Uh, LeBron, probably not often your primary defender as a rookie. What did you make of OG Ananobi from what you saw of him? Uh, I think he has a bright future. Um, and his future is now, actually. And you look at the rookie class from this year, it's, um, it's probably the best since 2003. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Reed, Athletic. Kev, you're, you're, uh, you've been talking a lot about your offensive play, you're trying to get it going, but just the last couple games and, and in this series defensively, how you feel you're playing a couple more block shots tonight? Where do you feel like your defensive game is right now? I think from a team defense aspect, um, you know, that's where I can have a lot of success. And if I'm really locked in, I feel like I can definitely make a difference and, you know, end plays with a defensive rebound. So uh, I think tonight, uh, just knowing what was at stake, not wanting to uh, 
you know, force it into a game five and being on our home floor, I, I felt like I was locked in and uh, really at the, uh, you know, coming back home for game three as well, I felt like at the start of that game, everybody was, was there for each other. And, you know, if one guy slipped to the basket, the next, next man stepped up. We were there on the swing swings. We were there on, you know, the blitzes when, you know, we got up on Lowry and DeRozan. So, um, no, just being really locked in, I think, has not only helped me, but helped our whole ball club. Aiden Grove, Cleveland.com. For either of you guys, um, how much are you looking forward to the rest? And are there any specific plans for the next two days off or just to get away from the game? Or are you going to you know, kind of hone in on whoever's next? <laughs> that was, uh, was going to say something stupid. I'm not... <laughs> um, we're going to enjoy a little bit, uh, enjoy the rest a little bit for these next couple of days. Um, but we will be tuned in Wednesday night and watching the game, game five, um, you know, seeing how – um, that unravels and seeing what happens, but uh, we've we've earned the right to to get some rest, rest our bodies, kind of recalibrate our mind, um, not having to uh, indulge into another playoff scheme or another playoff series just yet until possibly Wednesday night. So, um, you know, our plan is to, to to take care of our bodies, get as much rest, optimal rest as possible, and and then uh, lock back in once we get back on the practice floor. Last question, Ron. Is there a preference that you guys? would want to play Boston or Philadelphia? Well, we don't have home court, so we're going on the road no matter what. So, I mean, if, there, if, if we was a higher seed, I would have been like, yeah, so we can start at home, but we don't have home court in the Eastern Conference Finals, so we'll be ready for game one no matter if it's in Philly or in Boston. Thank you. Thank you.